Hey everyone, this video is on the rate of energy transfer with conduction and thermal conductivity. By way of review, thermal conduction transfers energy via the vibration of particles, which in turn causes collision between the particles and therefore the transfer of energy through a material. Thermal conduction transfers energy without the movement of the actual material itself and occurs most efficiently in solids due to the compact structure between particles when a substance is in its solid state. Thermal conductivity refers to how well a material is able to transfer heat via conduction. The rate at which heat transfers through conduction is dependent on various factors. Q over T, which is the rate of heat transfer, is equal to K, which is the thermal conductivity of the material that heat is transferred through, a, which is the surface area between two conductors that the heat is transferred between, and delta T is the difference in temperature between these two objects. And finally, this is all divided by D, which is the distance between the two conductors. The rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to the variables in the numerator, that is the thermal conductivity, the surface area of contact, and the difference in temperature. It is inversely proportional to the distance between the two conductors. So when we want to find out the rate at which heat is transferred by conduction, we want to know what the area of contact between the two conductors is, we want to know the distance between the two conductors, and we also want to know what the temperature difference is between two conductors. A steel wall with thermal conductivity of 50 watts per meter per Kelvin has a surface area of 2 meters squared and a thickness of 0.01 meter. So we can draw this. We have a steel wall and the steel wall has an area 2 meters squared. The thickness of the steel wall over which the heat is transferred is 0.01 meter. The temperature difference across the wall is 30 degrees. So the initial rate of heat transfer is equal to K times by A transfer the change in temperature, divided by the distance between them. K is given as 50, A is 2 meters squared, and the change in temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. And this is all divided by the distance between them. And this gives a rate of energy transfer of 3.0 times 10 to the power of 5 joules per second. It's important to understand that this number is the initial rate of heat transfer decreases as the two systems on the two sides of the wall will reach a thermal equilibrium, that is, they will come to the same temperature. As the temperature difference across the wall decreases, since the rate of energy transfer is directly proportional to delta T, when the delta T decreases, so will the rate of heat transfer. So in this instance, if all other variables remain constant, and as the temperature difference decreases, you would always expect that the initial rate of heat transfer to be the greatest. And this will decrease over time as the two systems approach a thermal equilibrium. Let's look at a more complicated example. We have a four kilogram sample of ice that's put into a cubical ice box of size 0.3 meter and has a thickness of five centimeter. And this ice box has a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. We are also given that the temperature outside the box is constant at 45 degrees Celsius and the thermal conductivity constant K for the material that makes up the ice box is 0.01 watts per meter per Kelvin. The latent heat of fusion water, that is how much energy it takes to melt a kilogram of ice to form liquid water is 335 kilojoules per kilogram of ice. Assume the temperature difference between the inside and the outside of the ice box is constant. Estimate the mass of the ice remaining after 6 hours. So what we need to do first is to calculate the rate at which the heat is transferred from outside the box, which has a higher temperature, to inside the box, which has a lower temperature. So let's write our equation again. Ka delta T divided by D. Our thermal conductivity constant is 0.01 and our area here is not just one side. We have a cube. Imagine a ice box. We are told that the side is 0.3 meter. 
That means one side of this cube is 0 0.3 squared. But a cube has six sides. So the total surface area that the heat is transferred across will be 0 0.3 squared times by six. And the temperature difference is 45 degrees Celsius. And this is all divided by the distance over which the heat has to transfer across. This is the thickness of the ice box. So we'll write down 0.05 meter here as the distance d. And we get a rate of 4.86 joules per second. Now, we want to know how much heat is actually transferred after 6 hours. So we can say Q is equal to 4.86 times by the time, which is 6 hours, but we want to convert this into seconds. So times by 60, times by 60 again, and we'll get about 1.05 times 10 to the power 5 joules over 6 hours. Now that we've calculated the amount of total heat it's transferred, we can use the latent heat of fusion to calculate how many kilograms of ice has actually been melted into water as a result of this heat. We know that for latent heat of fusion, Q, which is a heat that's absorbed by the ice, is equal to the mass of ice multiplied by the latent heat of fusion. Let's call that L. So the mass of ice that's been melted will be equal to 1.05 times 10 to the power 5 divided by the latent heat of fusion. But here, keep in mind that we need to keep the units consistent. Because Q is in joules, we should also convert the latent heat of fusion into joules per kilogram. And we'll do this by times in by a thousand. And this gives me an answer of 0.313 kilograms. So that's how much ice has been melted into water. Going back to the question, it wants us to estimate the mass of ice that's remaining. So we need to subtract the amount that's melted from the original mass of 4 kilograms. So 4 minus 0.313, and this gives us an answer of 3.69 kilograms of ice remaining. This concludes the video on rate of heat transfer via conduction. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.